Hey everyone, Liz Lovegood here. Welcome to Connected. Today will be a brief video on where I believe Gallows Hill actually may have been um, and the contrary to where they say it currently is and I'll show you both places and let you judge for yourself. I will also be doing a video on where I believe the Salem witches are buried because a According to history, they don't know where they're buried, but they do know where they're buried. They're just not telling us. So I will do some quick videos on that as well. I just want to preface this with also that I did live in downtown Salem. I also taught Salem witch history. I taught the Crucible. I taught um, Nathaniel Hawthorne's Young Goodman Brown. I did a lot of research on Hawthorne as a high school student and as an English major in college. So I have a lot of background knowledge on these topics as well as I've done a lot of research since moving to Salem. So I will start sharing some of that with you and again let you decide what you believe really happened based on these conclusions and do some research for yourself, okay? So a strange thing happened the weekend that I moved to Salem. I missed out on my Scott family reunion, which is in upstate New York, and my brother called me because he said that somebody in the family had done genealogy and that we were direct descendants of Margaret Scott, who was hanged on September 22nd, 1692, with the last group of Salem witches that were accused. As you know, everybody else was released or had escaped. So... I thought that was pretty fitting the first, you know, the first weekend I was there, the first weekend I moved there to find out I was a descendant after teaching Salem witch history and being so intrigued by it. So not just that, I did some research myself and I found out that Margaret was the only accused witch from Rowley, Massachusetts. And Rowley was one of the three towns I was hired to teach for. I was just starting my job at Triton Public Schools on the North Shore. It's in Byfield, Mass., which is a part of Newbury. And the school regional district was for Newbury, Salisbury, and Rowley. So I thought that was interesting as well. I was like, okay, so I'm a descendant of Margaret, who's from Rowley, which is the school district I'll be teaching for. Before that, I had remembered that I used to go to mediums all the time in Salem. I started going in my early 20s just to confirm some of the stuff that I was getting about myself because when you start doing readings, they kind of tell you that you may skew your own readings to see what you want to see. So I really wanted some verification or validation that what I was feeling was true. So I would go to these mediums and I would learn different things. And one of them, I've seen her a few times. She's really amazing, Pam. And she told me that my guardian angel, who had been with me since the age of two, her name was Margaret. And I learned this from Pam about 10 years before I moved to Salem. I just never put two and two together until I found out I was a descendant of a Margaret. And for those of you that don't know much about your spirit guides, we have many different spirit guides and angels that come and go with us throughout our lifetime. However, we have one main guide or angel, whichever you refer to, that's with us since the age of two. And that's because at the age of two, that's when we psychologically have the ego set in. And that's when we start becoming more of this world. So for me, Margaret came in and she's my main guide that's been with me since the age of two. Now, those guides stay with you usually throughout your lifetime unless there's some big experience that's going to change you and you need to swap a main spirit guide. But for the most part, they stay with you. So it made perfect sense that Margaret <laughs> directed me to Salem and probably helped me get the job at Triton so that I would be working for the school community that serviced the town that she was from. So I thought that was pretty interesting. So I do take Salem witch history very seriously as somebody that's a descendant, but also as a spiritualist. And I will do videos on that too coming up. I am not a witch. For those of you that I have been watching, you know that I am a light worker. So I know that being a spiritualist and being a medium and connected to the other side, 
that's where I'm coming from. I'm not a witch. So I just want to let you guys all know that I may be descended of an accused Salem witch, but I am not a witch. And I've had some weird things happen to me since I've told people that I'm a descendant of Margaret Scott. So maybe I'll disclose that later, maybe in the Conjuring series. So the information I give you is just, again, information I've done research on, but I also have strong feelings about, but I also want you to come to your own conclusions and determinations because that's what this is all about. So feel free to leave comments if you wanna talk about anything, but do some genealogy and research on your own. It's pretty interesting to find out who you might come from. And my being a descendant actually played into a video I'm gonna do on the Conjuring series coming up and how the Salem witches, as well as the Salem area, greater Salem area, was a part of the Conjuring world in the first and third movies. On that note, I also wanna let you know that Salem looked very differently back in the day, back in 1692. So it wasn't just Salem City with what we have today. And that's why when I show you the videos on Gallows Hill, the real Gallows Hill, or where the Salem witches are buried, just know that Salem encompassed a lot of the neighboring towns. So I'll get into this in the video just so you have a better idea. I'll show you a map and what it used to look like versus what it looks like today. So they don't want you to know where these real locations are because they'd like to keep the tourists grouped into Salem City. They don't want you going off and wandering and finding all these places on your own. It's too much for them. So they want to keep you just in Salem City. But for them to say that they don't know where these actual places are, you know, they're, they're lying to us. Um, they know historically. So I hope you enjoy these quick videos and decide for yourself on where you think the witches are buried and where do you think Gallows Hill really was. And for those of you that are spiritual, use your intuition because it's right every single time. It'll tell you. So I hope you enjoy watching and thank you for watching, listening, subscribing, liking, sharing, depending on what platform you're listening to this. Thank you again. Enjoy. When I first moved to Salem, I had to find a laundromat and I found Sunshine Express Laundry Center on Boston Street. Not just Boston Street, but 19 Boston Street, as you can see on the sign. When I went to do my laundry there, I would look up at the hill and see this massive towering apartment complex. And for some reason, the place gave me the creeps. It was like, I don't know, just like looking up at the house on Haunted Hill. Just super creepy creeps. I mean, it doesn't even belong there. This thing is so massive. If you go to downtown Salem or if you find yourself at 19 Boston Street, you will understand what I'm talking about. But it wasn't until a few years later after I had started using the laundromat that I had read testimony from the witch trials that I found out that 19 Boston Street was the exact location of the McCarter's house where Rebecca Eames was standing in 1692 when she looked up to the hill and saw folks waiting to be hanged. Historian Marilyn Roach made a great find while digging through the centuries-old records. It seems that in 1692, Rebecca Eames, another woman believed to be practicing evil witchcraft, was removed from her home in nearby Boxford. As her cart turned down Boston Street, she could see the gallows where they stood as she headed for Salem Village. Later on that day, Ames found herself in a preliminary trial. According to the report, the magistrate asked Ames if she'd witnessed the execution that morning. Her response was that she had been at the house below the hill and that, yes, she'd witnessed the folks at their hangings. The house below the hill was none other than John McCarter's house and a house that stood all the way until 1890 at 19 Boston Street. The same 19 Boston Street where Sunshine Laundry exists today in Salem, Massachusetts. The most important quote here from Eames was that she was at the house below the hill, 
which means that Gallows Hill could not possibly be at Proctor's Ledge because there wasn't a house below that tiny hill. And even if there were a house below Proctor's Landing in 1692, it wasn't where Rebecca Eames was standing. She was standing at 19 Boston Street where she was at the house below the hill, the McCarter House. And what hill are we talking about? The hill that currently has the apartment complex sitting on top of it very eerily. The apartment complex is called Salem Heights, and it is at 12 Pope Street, Salem, Mass. So you can look this up for yourself. But I will take you on a walking tour up there so that you can see Salem Heights and why I believe that that is where the actual Gallows Hill is. Hi everyone, we're starting our walking tour off at 19 Boston Street. Yes, at the Sunshine Laundry Place, where John McCarter's house once stood, as well as Rebecca Ames, who had said she was at the house below the hill. So there's Gallows Hill up there. And I'm continuing down Boston Street. So this is the path that Rebecca Ames took when she came to the courthouse that day. So I'm continuing down Boston Street. And Boston Street connects here with Federal Street. And if you watched my Salem walking tour, Federal Street, we had stopped and I showed you where that was and said that that would connect you over to Boston Street or Gallows Hill. And we're now on Pope Street at the corner of Pope and Boston Streets. And we are walking behind the Walgreens. There's Walgreens. And this is what they're saying is where Gallows Hill was, at Proctor's Ledge. So I'm going to bring you to Proctor's Ledge. There's where I think Gallows Hill is. There's the Walgreens, way up there to Gallows Hill. And now we're going to go up to Proctor's Ledge. But you can see that it's quite the hike up the hill there. We're now at Proctor's Ledge, and there's a memorial here to the witches. Each of the accused and hanged witches. And of course, Giles Corey, who was pressed to death, have their own little memorial. So this is Proctor's Ledge. I climbed up and I'm looking up at what I believe is Gallows Hill, which is above me right now. Behind the Witch's Memorial, if you walk back further, I believe that's where you find the actual Proctor's Ledge. So I climbed up here as well. Very glad I wore my sneakers.
It's all fenced in up here, so in order to see Proctor's ledge, you'd have to go to the other side. So I'm now looking through the fence, but you can get to Proctor's ledge on the other side of Walgreens. Now I've already come down Proctor's Ledge, and we're now going to walk up the hill to 12 Pope Street. So again, we're coming from the Witch Memorial at Proctor's Ledge, and I'm heading up to 12 Pope Street, where I personally believe Gallows Hill is. So there's Salem Heights, 12 Pope Street and I'm looking down at Proctor's Ledge, the Witch's Memorial. So this way you can kind of get an idea for how high these hills are. So heading up 12 Pope Street, I'm looking down, I'm climbing toward the top, You can see it's a little bit of a walk. But there's quite the drop off to the houses and auto body shop below. And the street, I can see Boston Street from here. Much, much higher than Proctor's Ledge. At this spot right at the top, I really can't even explain what I felt, but I think this little patch of dirt here was really where Gallows Hill was. And when I zoom down, I can see the laundromat. So that would put me right where Rebecca Ames would have seen the folks going up for their hangings. And the bodies could have fallen down into the crevices below, like had been documented. But standing on that one patch of dirt right there, it was more than just psychic chills. I didn't want to leave. I, I just felt so much energy inside of me. I knew that that's where the witches were hanged. That this is the real Gallows Hill. When you're up here, as you can see, there's a path down below the apartments. So I'm still looking way down at Boston Street where Rebecca Ames was. I'm just gonna continue down this path just to see what's down here. There's the big Salem Heights apartment complex. But you can see this is all natural. There's tons of rocks and trees. And there's a field below. There were some weird, eerie, dead trees right in this location. There were two right next to each other. I'll come back to them again when I leave.
but you can see how steep this hill actually is. And there's many places where bodies could have been pushed over. Back to the dead trees. I don't know, I just found them fascinating. Being right next to each other. Well, creepy. And now I'm back to the place where I felt, I really felt energetically was Gallows Hill. That spot right there, that patch of dirt, that area. And it could have been more before, but you know, I'm not really sure what the landscape looked like before they put up Salem Heights apartment complex. But I'm just looking down at the auto body shop below, looking around. Like I said, I didn't want to leave that spot. Something was telling me that this was it. Almost like the ghosts of my ancestors were with me. I walked to the back of Salem Heights Apartments, and right there where you see the Salem water tank with the witch, that's Gallows Park. And I'm looking down again, downhill. This area here, I believe, was Gallows Hill. And they just, you know, paved over it. Because that's fine. But a lot of times we cover up what we don't want people to know about, right? But definitely if you go and visit, check that spot out and let me know in the comments how it made you feel. I wasn't scared, I was just overwhelmed by energy. So again, you can see how steep this is. I'm at the top of a very tall hill, <laughs> heading down, but I'm still above where Proctor's ledge the supposed, what they want you to believe, Gallows Hill, where they think it was. Definitely not true. They didn't consult a medium. Or, I'm sure, didn't read that testimony about how Ames was at the house below the hill. So now I'm headed back up Boston Street, back to 19 Boston Street. And again, you can see how overwhelming that apartment complex is and how tall that hill is compared to tiny, tiny, tiny little Proctor's Ledge that was behind the Walgreens. See, very amazing, just massive structure there with the park down below. So there's my video on where I believe the real Gallows Hill is. Now after you do your own research and go there and visit, let me know in the comments what you believe. But again, research can be skewed so that the audience thinks it's in a different place. So keep that in mind. But the testimony speaks for itself. If Ames were at 19 Boston Street at the house beneath the hill, she looked up, she would have seen exactly what you're seeing right now. Where that big apartment complex is, she would have seen a bunch of folks ready for the hanging. Just saying. So use your own feelings about this and get back to me. Please write in the comments what you think and what you feel and what you believe when you go and visit Salem, Massachusetts. And thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, follow, depending on where you're watching this video or listening to this podcast. So thank you so much. I appreciate you.